The Feynman diagrams revolutionized particle physics by providing a simple system to sort out the infinite possibilities when elementary particles interact. This incredible simplicity provides some stunning insights into the nature of reality. Feynman's path integral shows us that to properly calculate the probability of a particle traveling between two points, we need to add up the contributions from all conceivable paths between those points, including the impossible ones. According to Feynman's approach to quantum mechanics, every conceivable path that leads from a measured initial state to a measured final state is possible mathematically. To calculate the probability of any quantum system evolving between two states, we need to sum over every conceivable intermediate state. But this is impossible because there are infinite possible intermediate states. This is where the Feynman diagrams come into play. They allow physicists to quickly figure out which of the infinite possibilities need to be considered to get an answer that's good enough. Each diagram represents a family of interactions and tells us the equation needed to calculate the contribution of that family to the total probability. These absurdly simple setup rules allow us to easily find out the important interactions. To understand the Feynman diagram, let us use an example. We are going to use quantum electrodynamics which is the first and the predictably most powerful quantum field theory. QED talks about the interaction of the electron field and the electromagnetic field, which means interactions between electrons, positrons and photons. In Feynman diagrams, we depict the electron as an arrow pointing forward in time or the positron as an arrow backward in time. The antimatter is represented as the time-reversed matter. This interpretation was originally the idea of Ernst Stueckelberg. The photon is shown as a wavy line. Time direction is irrelevant for photon. Now the electric and the electromagnetic fields need to interact to give anything measurable. This is where the simplicity and powerful nature of this method is seen. Particle or field interactions are represented as a vertex which is a point where the lines representing the different particles come together. As it turns out that there's only one possible vertex in QED. One with an arrow pointing in, an arrow pointing out and a single photon connection. This vertex alone represents six very different seeming interactions and it can be used to construct infinite Feynman diagrams. Let's have a look at the possibilities. Oriented like this, with time increasing upwards, this vertex represents an initial electron that emits a photon, after which both particles move off in opposite directions. But if we rotate this vertex so that photon is coming in from below, we get a picture in which an electron absorbs that incoming photon. The photon vanishes and transfers the momentum to the electron. On rotating again, the picture is a photon coming in and giving up its energy to produce an electron-positron pair. This is known as pair production. Rotate again and now we have a positron absorbing photon. And then positron emitting a photon. And finally an electron and a positron annihilating each other to produce a photon. This is known as pair annihilation. That's all the ways in which the electromagnetic and electron fields can interact. Every single QED interaction is built from these. But why only these interactions? The reason is conservation law. Energy and momentum conservation require particles not to vanish or appear from nothing, which guarantees that if something goes in, then something else comes out. In addition to that, charge must be conserved. If one electron or positron goes in, then one electron or positron respectively must leave. If an electron and positron both go in, then their charges cancel, so a zero charge photon must leave. Similarly, if a photon creates a negatively charged electron, it must also create a positively charged positron. There are other more complex ways in which ingoing and outgoing particles can balance charge. All of these can be built up from this one vertex. Before going any further, we have to know another important rule for Feynman diagrams. The overall interaction described by set of Feynman diagrams is defined by the particles going in and the particles going out. These are the particles we actually measure. We know their properties like energy, momentum and charge. These particles follow Einstein's mass energy equation and are called on-shell particles. They sit on the shell structure we get when we plot Einstein's equation of energy, momentum and mass. 
On the other hand, everything that happens between ingoing and outgoing tracks has questionable reality. Each possible diagram is a valid part of the possibility space for that interaction. The particles that have their entire existence between vertices within the diagram but don't enter or leave are called virtual particles. Their correspondence to anything resembling real particles is debatable. They are also by definition unmeasurable. Otherwise they would be one of our ingoing or outgoing particles. These particles do not obey mass energy equivalence so they are called off-shell particles. Electron scattering can be depicted as two electrons going into an interaction and then two electrons going out. We know the momentum of the ingoing and outgoing electrons. Any combination of the fundamental three path vertex that can lead to this final result has to be considered. Simple examples are the exchange of a single photon to transfer momentum between electrons or the exchange of two or more photons. But we can add as many of these vertices as we like including the electrons exchanging photons with themselves at different stages in the process or photons momentarily splitting into virtual electron positron pairs. Any of these are possible as long as the final result is the same. Part of the beauty of Feynman diagrams is that each of these diagrams themselves represents an infinite number of specific interactions. Each of the particle paths are actually infinite paths as well as infinite possibilities for particle momenta. We have to consider even impossible faster than light paths. For any particle besides the ingoing and outgoing on-shell particles, any energy, speed and even direction in time is possible. This last point is really powerful. For example, for two electrons exchanging a single photon, it does not matter if we draw the photon going from the first to the second or from the second to the first. Even though this seems like a very different interaction, we can think of the differences just being the photon traveling forward in time in one case and backwards in the other. The math describing the transfer covers both cases. Let's look at another example of Compton scattering. In this process, an incoming electron and an incoming photon bounce off each other. One way that can happen is for the electron to emit a new photon and later absorb the old incoming photon. In that intermediate stage, between vertices the electron is a virtual particle, which means we include all possible paths it might take as long as they lead to producing the same final electron and photon. That also includes paths backwards in time. Mathematically, a time-reversed electron looks exactly like a positron. Like in this situation, the same particles go in and out. But now the interactions look very different. Instead of an electron emitting and then absorbing a photon, we have on one side that incoming photon creating an electron-positron pair, that new electron becomes our outgoing electron, but the positron annihilates with the incoming electron and produces the outgoing photon. These may seem like wildly different processes, but in the math represented by Feynman diagrams, they are exactly the same. The interpretation of the interactions is irrelevant. All we care about is the topology of the diagram. In other words, how are the vertices connected to each other? This fact makes Feynman diagrams an incredibly powerful tool in simplifying quantum field theory calculations. When Feynman first introduced his diagrams, fellow physicist Freeman Dyson translated the diagrams into mathematics that researchers could understand and work with. He also showed how infinities could be converted into finite values through renormalization. Soon the diagrams were everywhere transforming modern theoretical physics. But after a time, their limitations became increasingly evident. When it comes to collisions of subatomic particles like quarks and gluons, thousands of diagrams are needed to calculate the relatively simple scattering amplitude. For this reason, physicists are now working on a geometric approach for scattering amplitude. This is known as the amplituhedron. Amplituhedron theory challenges the necessity of space-time locality and unitarity in particle interactions. Instead, they are treated as properties that emerge from an underlying phenomenon. But it is undeniable that the Feynman diagrams helped to unlock the underlying physics of our universe on the smallest scale. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new. 
if you did please like and share this video and to, to see such videos in future do subscribe